Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Alma Mater, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to 15th century Portugal. At least, I'm assuming we're in Portugal. The rules never actually specifically state what Renaissance era country we are in, but considering the fact that this is from the same design team and publisher that brought us uh, Coimbra, and it even has some of the same character art as Coimbra. And Coimbra was set in Portugal. I'm going to assume we're in Portugal right now. Uh, specifically, every player is competing to try to build the most prestigious university possible by recruiting uh, professors and students, chasing after milestones, uh, doing research, all kinds of business. And I've got the game set up. Here's a two player. I'm a green player. Jen is the blue player. And as part of setup, there is a bunch of unique things that will make this game play differently every time. It is true that the 16 uh, types of students are the same every single play, but the research track is randomly generated. The milestones are randomly chosen. The goals to get the milestones are randomly chosen. The collection of, of uh, professors is randomly chosen. And each player uh, engages in a draft before the game starts, where we start with four and we take one, hand the rest around until everybody has four setup cards, and then you toss one, and the remaining three determine what your starting stuff is. So I already did that before I mean, I've set everything up. So I've got two dictionaries, six ducats. Does that say what country it is? I think ducats were pretty widely used in Europe um, in the 15th century. And let's see, I've got, I'm starting with four prestige, four victory points, and I've got one, two, three of my books of knowledge. I am the green player. This is knowledge that I have generated. And because I got these and they have a little star on them, that means I had a choice when I collected them. I could keep them as a resource that I can use. You need to spend knowledge to recruit the best students and professors. Or I could have started teaching this knowledge, which means it would have gone up here. I could have put one, two, or all three of these stars that's why they have stars on them, up here to start teaching them. And that means they would start generating income for me at the end of every round. The game takes place over six rounds. Now, I chose not to do that. It would be nice to have some income. But instead, I want to have them on hand so I can use them as a resource. So here's my dictionaries. Here's my starting income, or my, my starting knowledge, my green knowledge. I've got six, and I've got four victory points. So that was it for me. Jen, in the draft, she ended up getting these cards, which gave her uh, three coins. Three of her of her blue knowledge, which she did go on ahead and lock up here to indicate that this is income she's going to be generating. She is actually teaching this bit of knowledge it's going to make points for, although it also creates opportunities for me, which we might come back to later. And let's see, she got one free trick up the research track, which is why Jen didn't have to spend three coins to do this. She got some research for free. She has one dictionary and... In addition to the three star, the special ones that she took and put up there, she also has three different. Um, and those could have been her color or they could have been a different one. Jen chose to branch out. She took two of my color knowledge and one red knowledge, which represents the third virtual player that exists only in a two-player game. I forget his name. His name is Ignatius. And Ignatius basically creates opportunities for us. And because this is a worker placement game, also blocks some of the areas. And that's all he does. He makes no decisions. He just um, you know, gets in our way, but also gives us a chance to do stuff. So Jen uh, has a variety of stuff. And she could have kept some of this knowledge for herself too. But she wants to set up and start earning some income by teaching this. We are a university after all. So, also the last thing is each of us ended up getting one special power. Uh, thanks to, uh, in my case, Leon Batista Alberti. Which uh, is a power that means I can give lectures without having to spend books. Which means I want to get a professor as fast as I can so I can start leveraging that ability. And Jen over here, she's got Van Vanocchio... Berengicio, um, which says Jen wants to be recruiting students as fast as she can because she gets a dictionary and Ducats when she does. So those are our chancellors. This is our starting resources. We each have four masters, uh, which are our workers we can deploy, and we are ready to go. And how does the game work? Well, on a player's turn, they are either 
If they have a professor, they can tap that professor to have them give a lecture, which will trigger whatever the professor's special power is. Now, at the beginning of the game, neither of us have any professors. So instead of that, we are going to start deploying our workers. And I should say, by the way, um, oh, what's it? I Ignatius is always the first player in a two-player game. Jen is the second player. I'm the third player. Uh, Jen's second because she had a higher combined total of these numbers on her setup cards, which meant she goes before I do. 5 plus 4 plus 4 does not beat 6 plus 7 plus 7. So, Jen is... Ignatius is always the first player. Jen is second. I am third. And so, Ignatius is going to do the following. Every round, he does some research. This time, he's going crazy. He's doing three. So he's the red player. One, two, three. And because he's hit the top, he actually gets a bonus. Whenever anybody hits the top of a given research card, they jump up here to get the bonus. Now, um, Ignotius, he does not care about any resources. He doesn't care about bonuses. All he's doing is researching and um, you know teaching stuff and blocking worker placement spots. So he's come up here. He, if he were a player, they would get the bonus, but he doesn't. Jen and I are also racing to get there. He is going to get two of his red books. And in the same way Jen is teaching her knowledge, he is teaching his knowledge as well. So they come over here. And he is going to block um, these three worker placement spots. Bip, bop, and boop. And that's it. He is done. Next round, he will draw another card and he will do a different combination. He'll block three spaces, he'll do a variable amount of research, and he'll do a variable amount of additional teaching, thereby creating more opportunities for us. In the same way Jen gave me opportunities by teaching, so is Ign he's given opportunities to both of us. Represents a third player, that's it. He doesn't do anything else. He does not accrue stuff. Um, he does not compete for things. He just races us on research and pretty much blocks spaces. Okay, now... It is Jen's turn. Like I said, Jen doesn't have any professors yet, so she is going to be the first to send her, well, her, the second to send her workers out. And it is important uh, who gets to go first because Jen is not blocked from, you know, coming over to this space or this space or this space. But if somebody else is already there, you have to spend one more than the maximum amount of workers somebody else has already done. So Jen could come here, but she would have to spend two. And then if I wanted to go there, because Jen spent two, I'd have to spend three. And so getting places first is a big deal. And uh, because we only have four workers, it is possible to earn more workers over time. But what is Jen going to do? Well, here's the deal. Because of Jen's Chancellor, which gives her this bonus every time she places a student in a lecture hall, a B lecture hall, she gets money and dictionaries. Jen wants to recruit a student as fast as possible. Can she do that? Well, we need books. And Jen does have a nice collection of books. So I think, yes, Jen is going to either recruit a student from this row or this row or this row. If she wanted to recruit a student from this row, because uh, our enemy was already there, she would have had to spend two. So that row is dead to her. She is not going to overpay. But Jen's going to be the first in any of these rows. So which one is it going to be? Well, I mean, she's going to be recruiting um, you know, one of these students. And right now, the cost to recruit students, you have to impress them with knowledge, which means you have to spend books. Any of these art students, you need to spend three total books. Any of these law students, you need to spend four. The medicine students, you need to spend five. And the mathematicians, you need to spend six books. Jen has on hand four books right now. She could have had more, but remember, the other blue books, she just went on ahead and locked them in to start teaching. So this is what Jen has. So with four books, she could afford anybody in the first or the second row because she needs three or four books. And what does she want to do? Let's see. Well, she goes to the second row and says, and say, uh, takes this justice or law student. He would immediately give her one book one dictionary, and at the end of every round, and the game takes place over six rounds, she will be getting income of another coin and another dictionary. So Jen could start building up dictionaries really quick with that guy. 
And that's not bad because, remember, these milestones were chosen randomly. The game comes with a whole bunch of them. The milestone for this chancellor is four dictionaries and 15 coins. So this could start being some passive income to get up to completing this. When you actually have whatever you need, seven students, two professors of, uh, of law and... Uh, art, or in this case, 15 coins and four dictionaries, you take one of these as a reminder that you have access to A. And getting access to A not only would give us access to this particular power, which is nice, but also gives us another master worker. So Jen would like to do that. So she is tempted to take this guy and just start raking in the dictionaries, because normally dictionaries cost four coins, but this is going to be free. But that means she'd have to spend all of her books, including the dictionary she already has. If she goes for these art students, she would only have to spend three books. And this one is interesting. This is basically whenever a player visits the colloquium. Um, or no, no, no. No, this is the bishop, the orange. Whenever he visits the bishop, in addition to getting the money that you would normally get, you also get to do some research. So, if Jen gets this, she's going to want to be, you know, borrowing money from the church like crazy and triggering research along the way. So, that's pretty nice. This one gives her an extra worker placement spot where she can spend money to get her own books and do research. Now, we actually start with a student like that. Both of us have that student on our starting board, but the default one only lets us activate six times. This one lets us activate eight times. So, that's a bit of an upgrade. Hmm. All right. This one just would immediately give a coin and give a coin at the end of every round and increase our maximum book storage capacity. Because at the beginning of the game, our book, we can only carry six books over from one round to the next. All right. And, you know, so like I said, Jen can afford any of these. I think she likes this idea of starting to save up. So Jen is going to overpay. Now, if we look a little bit more closely, you can see specifically two, a pair of two books plus a book plus a book. This represents the colors. So Jen has to have a matching pair. She has one. So she'll use these two. And then another book and another book, she'll use both of these. Mm -hmm. Oh! No, she can't! Because dictionaries are special. Um, whenever it's a gray, that means it has to be one of the player colors. So you can see you need dictionaries for these higher level ones, but Jen can't afford them anyway because you need five. One of them has to be a dictionary. So actually, I'm wrong. Jen cannot get this student, even though she wants to, because she needs one more book. Well, hold on then. Maybe she shouldn't rush right out and try to recruit. That doesn't have to be her first action. She could go there later. She could instead come over. Well, there's other stuff she could do. I was talking about this. She can visit the bishop and just get money. One would get her two. If she sent two of her workers as a single action, she'd get five. If she sent three of her four workers, she'd get eight. And she might want to do that eventually to get up to that 15 coins. But the colloquium is important because you can spend money to either, well, you can spend four bucks as much as you want to get, oh, what are they called? Dictionaries. Or you can spend a variable amount of money as much as you want to buy books. Not from the common supply, but from other players. If Jen wanted to, Jen could come over here and she could spend three bucks or four bucks to buy one or both of these books from the opponent, from uh, uh, Ig Igtus. Now, I don't have any books, so Jen can't buy them for me, but she could buy these. And she would score some victory points as well. So that's very interesting. Now, but here's the problem. Jen only has three bucks. Still, three bucks to get that last book. That's the book she needs to be able to recruit this guy. So that kind of makes sense. Now, there's another way she could get books. Instead of coming over here to Colloquium, Jen could go visit her own student, which she could spend one, two, or three or more to get one, two, or three or more of her own blue-colored books. So she'd have those on hand. So that's a lot cheaper. Uh, or, you know, spending three bucks to get um, one that's being publicly taught by another university as opposed to spending one buck to get her own. But Jen will also score victory points if she, um, you know, collaborates, works with another university for the betterment of all. So does she want to come here, just buy some of her own knowledge cheap from one of her, I guess her teacher assistants over there, or does she want to come to the colloquium and uh, spend all three of her money to get this, which will also score her two points? Ah. 
Now, the interesting thing is, if Jen comes here, I could still come here too. The bishop and the colloquium, they are not blocked. It's all these gray spaces that once somebody goes, another player can go there, they'll have to pay more workers than normal. So, does Jen want points, or does she want to save her cash? I think at this point, she'll wor she, at this point, she won't worry about points. She'll visit her own student. So, she could spend up to six coins to get up to six knowledge. Let's burn through all of it. Because remember, Jen's teaching all of this stuff. This is going to generate income for her at the end of the round. Plus, if she gets this guy, he's going to generate income. So Jen's going to burn all of her cash to get one, two, three blue books. The, the knowledge that her university specializes in. And now, if Jen had any more money left over, she could actually do research. But to move to the next step, she would have to pay seven coins minus two for every student. And Jen doesn't have any money. She just blew all of that. So I don't think that makes much sense right now. So with that in mind, Jen is only getting the knowledge and that was her first turn. She hasn't blocked me at all. But now she's got all the books she needs to recruit the one she wants next turn. It is now my turn. And remember, the Chancellor I got really rewards me for um, getting uh, professors so that I can give lectures without having to spend books. So I would like to get a professor. Now, in the same way that you need books to get students, and this little up chart up here reminds you what combinations you need. You have a fair bit of flexibility. Sometimes they need dictionaries. Sometimes they need pairs. But the um, professors, they need money. Five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks, eight bucks. Plus, they need four, six... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or ten. Four, six, eight, or ten books plus five, six, seven, or eight bucks to bring them on board. But they will work for you for the rest of the game. And hey, if I get this power, then I've got two chancellors that will help me run my professors more efficiently. So I think I want to get a professor. I do have six bucks, which means I could afford any of these four. Um, but... These ones need to have, I need to have four books, a pair, and then two singles. This one, I need three of a kind, and then two of a kind, and then one of a kind. Although, heck, I mean, they could be all six of the same if I wanted. So, I have five books. That is enough to recruit either of these. Uh, and this is why I didn't put my books up here. Uh, so they could generate income. So I could have them on hand. I could use them right away. Jen had to spend time and effort getting more books. I've got the books I need right now. I've got enough books to hire a student, but I care more about professors. But I need one more book. If I want to get these medicine professors, which are um, arguably a little bit more powerful. I think I'm not going to do that, though. Yeah. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. There's a lot going on here. Um, actually, these do have to be three unique colors. I can't mix and match. And I've only got two colors. So I have to go spend some time getting some books as well. I could do the same thing Jen did and visit my own student. Or I'm not... Mm, I see. I need five. So if I came here and spent one, I'd get one book. Oh, that's painful. I'm not happy about that. Let's, let's come over here and actually get some books and some points. Um, rather than Jen that just paid her money to get books. I'm going to pay money and get points as well. Because visiting here, like I said, I have a choice. I can either spend money to get dictionaries, or I can spend money to grab the books of other players, which will reduce their income, and it will give me points. So, here's the problem though. I have to give money, and I would have to give it. So if I buy any of Jen's books, I am giving her three or four bucks, or ducats. I would rather not do that. I would rather not make her rich. So I think I'm going to come over here to the red player. And I could pay three, four, or seven, because I can buy as many as I want. I'm going to pay three of my starting capital. Ouch. Five, three. So now I don't have enough to hire. We'll worry about that in a second. And I'm going to get this book. I don't have enough to get the other book. But now I've got the three colors I need to hire somebody. But now i got to go get some cash. But... In addition to the three bucks that I... Well, I put this money back in the supply because there is no actual player. If I was buying one of Jen's books, I would have to give her the money. Instead, I gave, I put mine in supply. And this bookshelf has a handy dandy little reminder that I get two victory points. Woohoo! And I already had four, so I'm screaming in the lead to six. And now, this bookshelf will never give victory points again, which means I flip it back face down. In the future, there could be more red books in this slot. 
and they could be bought if a player needs, but there will be no victory points for getting them, at which point you're better off just um, you know, getting your own books potentially. So uh, the more somebody uh, gives away or sells knowledge that they are teaching, the less likely people are to want to do it in the future because you miss out on the chances to score points. It's a very interesting little wrinkle to that. So that was my turn. We both collected more books. Jen just stayed to herself and got them on the cheap. I interfaced with another university and got some points, but paid a bit more cash. All right, it is Jen's turn again, because the, the dummy player only does their action at the beginning of the round, and then that's it. So Jen is now going to come over here and recruit her student, which means she needs a pair and a book and a book. And let's see, so she'll use the two greens as the pair. She'll use one red and one of her blues. You know what? No, 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 no. Let's have the two blues because the blues are the easiest ones for her to get. Greens are a bit tougher for her to get. So she's going to hold on to those. So uh, it had to be three colors. So she has a pair and then two uh, and then two singles. So Jen is paying all of this and she is hired or recruited. Uh, um, although they probably work for you too. Her first, which immediately gives her one coin. And now Jen has a passive... She already had passive income from all the stuff she's teaching, but now she's getting another coin and a dictionary around. Oh, and she got a dictionary as well. Okay. And she slots it in. When we get uh, students, we always slot them into the next spot, and all these spots are numbered. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So Jen has to put it into this slot, which means it's a B student. The next will be an A student, because it'll go there and back and forth. And a B student is important because Jen's chancellor. Whenever she recruits into the B hall, Jen gets three bucks and another dictionary. Boom, boom. All right, so Jen is very happy about that. And she's still got two potential more actions this round. Okay, so that was her turn. It is my turn. My problem is I've now got all the books I need to recruit a professor. I don't have the cash. I need some cash money. So what am I gonna do? I will come over here and visit the bishop. If I come with one, I get two. Uh, but you know what? What the heck? Let's go ahead and go for two and get five. I could spend all of mine and get eight. That would be awesome. But if I do that, um, I won't have any more workers. So I won't actually be able to recruit. And I, I, so I do want to do it. So I'm just going to burn through the, almost all my workforce. I get five more coins. And that was my turn. Also, at the end of the round, Whoever has sent the most workers to visit the bishop becomes first player. So there's a nice little side benefit to this as well, because currently I'll be first player. I'll get first dibs on stuff in round two. All right, so that was my next turn. It is Jen's third turn. And what is she going to do now? Look at all these dictionaries she's got. Um, whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. If Jen had one more dollar she could recruit a professor, which would be awesome. Um, and the interesting thing is, the professors are happy to take dictionaries. They just want three colors, or four colors, for the really tough ones. So Jen ha could ha use two dictionaries, plus a single blue and a single red, and get either of these if she had one more coin, which she does not. So does she want to? She could come over here as well. But coming over here with only one means she'll only get two, which is all she needs, and I'll still be first player next turn. But yeah, getting another... Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yes, Jen is going to also visit the bishop and get two bucks. All right. Bit painful. She would have liked to come here and get a bigger move, but that's okay. And now this is my last turn. And I am... <gasps> Oh my goodness. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm going to come over in a two-player game. This is the two and three-player side of the board. On the other side, there's more workers placement spots. There are um, two places where it could be recruiting. But again, I can't go there because this is for these ones, the expensive ones. I need to come down here. I can't come there uh, because I need two workers. All right. So here's the painful thing. I only sent one worker over to the bishop, which means I got two instead of five, which means I have enough. And that meant I then had two workers so I could come down there and recruit, which means, by the way, I was not paying attention. Jen does not have three workers. She, even though she's set up to do it, she cannot recruit. Ouch. 
Ouch. You know what then? If Jen were paying attention, if I were paying attention, there's a lot going on here. At the same time that I should have only taken two so I could have gotten the professor now, Jen realized she couldn't get the professor, so she sent two over here to basically get five bucks. So we basically just reversed, which means Jen is going to hold on to first player. All right, so Jen's got a bunch of cash, and that's it. Jen is done, um, and my last action is to come over here and recruit because ah, you were blocking me. All right, so I need to spend five. Done. I am broke. Uh, and I need two matching books of a color, and then another color, and then another color to get either of them. So, I will use two matching books, and a color, and a color. So, this is what I'm going to pay. The same way Jen spent knowledge to hire this student, I'm going to spend knowledge to either hire this or this professor. And remember, there are different ones. There's actually four in each of the disciplines, and every time you play, there's going to be two of them available. So, this one... His power is, I. whenever he lectures, I get to fill all of my bookshelves. And that means, if I do that right now, I'll go from no income to six income this round. That is huge. But this other one is huge too. Whenever he lectures, I can reactivate a worker that I have previously activated. That is also amazing. So that is cool, but right now, I think I want this one more. So... Remember I had to pay the five coins? Now I cover it up because I spent two and one and one. And I've got him. He's worth four points at the end of the game. And because the color I spent the most of was green, that means he favors green knowledge. If, the, if, I, if, if it had been blue, he would favor blue knowledge. Now what that means is on future rounds, if I want to tap him to use his ability, I have to sacrifice, I have to pay whatever book he likes. But right now, the moment you hire a, uh, a professor, you get one activation for free. So I don't have to. Although, that's the thing. I don't have to pay the books anyway. That's why I wanted the professor. I can make them lecture for free for the whole game. So anyway, so I paid through the nose. I've got him, and that means this is huge. Like I said, these professors are super powerful. I've gone from having nothing I am teaching to teaching everything. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. This, by the way, I saw he was here as part of setup. That is why I did not set aside any of my books for teaching, because I knew I was going to get him. No matter what it took, I was going to get him so that I could fill all this up before the first round is over. So that was that. And that was my last action. Now, there is an important thing to bear in mind. You'll notice, I didn't return the... You know, when Jen got a student, she returned the books to the supply. I keep them here, because that means in the future, if Jen wants to recruit this guy... Jen, ha she doesn't have to pay the money because the money is covered up, but she has to pay this combination of, car of books. She has to have two green, one yellow, and one red to be able to recruit him. If she wants to recruit him, she still needs five bucks and the rest of it. But, and as players recruit, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the various professors, they are permanently setting a price for all other players. So that has definitely changed the situation. Green, just be, which is tougher for Jen to get. I can get green all day long, but Jen, she's got to come to me. Or there's another place. We can come up here, which is very expensive. You can spend three bucks to get one book of your choosing, six bucks to get a book plus a dictionary, or nine bucks to get two books and a dictionary. That is, this is a painful way to go. Now, alternatively, when you come here, instead of coming, I think this is the library, you can come to the lab, and you can do research, which we also want to be doing. So far, nobody's been doing any research. There's so much going on. So you can come here to research and work your way up because the higher your research, the more your brand of knowledge is worth. Um, right now, the red is the best knowledge and mine is the worst because I've done no research. Jen had a little bit of free research as part of setup. Okay. Phew. That was the first of six rounds. But we're not done yet because now we've got to go through all these end of round steps that are very nicely summarized. We were in this step, which was place workers or activate professors. We're done with that. Now we come over here and we evaluate turn order. And that has to do with this. Because Jen sent more to the bishop, Jen stays in first. If I had sent more, then she and I would change. Now, the red player, the dummy player, always stays first. But that's only a two-player thing. So, 
Turn order has not changed. We both went, but Jen gets to hold on. If both Jen and I had sent one, then it would change. Because if we're tied, whoever went there first breaks the tie. So since I saw the bishop first, he would favor me. But instead, favors Jen. Jen stays second player. Or first human player. We've done that. Next, we check to see if we've gone over our total amount of books we can carry. I have... Two, Jen has one, two, three, four, five. That's fine because at the beginning of the game, we can hold up to six books. After we get our second student, we have this one and we get a student and then another student, we can go up to seven books. Then once we get two more students, we can go up to eight and nine and 10 and 12. But getting these later students, it gets expensive. We have to start investing and expanding our campus to be able to teach more. Also, when we get our sixth student, we get an extra worker. Oh, baby. Want to get that sixth student pretty bad. But um, that's a ways off. Okay, so nobody has too many books, so we don't have to judge any. Now, we evaluate the, um, the re research track. And red is up top. That means red is the most valuable knowledge. Jen is second. Blue is the second most valuable knowledge. And my green, that's practically tabloid fodder. Nobody cares. It's worth zero um, because I haven't done any research. So this is going to make a big difference in the future related to recruiting students. But we'll talk about that in the second round. Next, any tapped professors get untapped. So they're ready to go next round. Next, we get our masters back. Bippity bop. Bippity boppity bop. Okay. Next, we move on to round two. And then finally, we get our income. Alrighty, my income is one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't have income from any students or professors or anything else, but I've got six because of because this professor worked overtime. I just made six bucks. Woohoo! Jen gets one, two, three, plus another dictionary, plus three more. She also just got six bucks and a dictionary. Nice. Jen, is she one, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, Jen has done it. She's got four dictionaries and five, ten, fifteen. Anytime, this doesn't take a turn, anytime that you can demonstrate you've met any of those milestones, you immediately get the marker that you've met a milestone. Meeting one milestone is worth, what is it? Um, it's, oh, it's on our boards. It's three points. Two milestones is seven. Three milestones is 12. Jen has met the first milestone. She now has access to this power. But more importantly, she has a fifth master. Boom! A very nice. Jen is very happy with that. Okay. I can, you know, there's still another one of these, so I could get access to this master as well, which I would definitely like to do. Because every, I mean, already I can lecture for free. And this says when I lecture, I also earn victory points. So I've got one dictionary and six bucks. I'm, I'm a million miles away. I need to get that student so I can hit that line too. There is one student for everybody, one of these chancers for everybody, one teacher for everybody. So it, it's not like you ever get frozen out, but um, right. Whoa, that was a big opening move for Jen. Although I've got a professor. That's not bad. That's not nothing. Okay. So was there anything else? Yeah, Jen got her income. I got mine. And now our curriculum updates. And what that means is slide, which means... The knowledge that we were teaching just got cheaper. So, um, although not cheaper yet, um, you know, actually before, the knowledge Jen was teaching, I could buy it from her from four, three, or three. Now, I can buy it from her for three, three, and three. If I wait a little bit longer, it'll eventually drop down to where I could buy the knowledge from her for two. Also, the same thing is going to happen over here. Boop. And, um, oop, the knowledge gets cheaper. A new bookshelf comes out. And these bookshelves have different amounts of prestige. So this bookshelf just came out. This one went away. And, oh, mine does as well. So, hey, I've taught all this stuff. And then immediately, people are sick and tired of that lesson. So that is just gone. Bye-bye. Got to get all these others slid over. Whee! And I put this over here. 
And sadly, I don't get to keep that book. Nobody cares about this green knowledge anymore. Alrighty. Oh, whoops, I forgot. Also, by the way, there's also income for being the top dog in terms of research. Red, if Red cared about money, they get two. Jen does get one, and I get none because I've done no research. Boom. Okay, so we are done with that. And we now go on to round two. And remember, red is always first. So red says, hi, I'd just like to do one research, get three more lessons to teach, and block all of these worker placement spaces. So boom, a boom, and a boom. And uh, one more research, just jumped up there. And uh, three more red lessons. Which again, is income for a player, but for us, this is just opportunities for us to buy books and score victory points depending on which bookshelf it came out of. Buying this book costs four, but it is worth three victory points. Okay, so that was it. Red is done. Ah, Jen is the first player. She now has five workers and she is a very happy. But now that she has this power, she wants to get herself a, uh, a whatchamacallit, a uh, 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 professor as well. And Jen could do it right now. What the heck? Let's just go on ahead and jump over here. Jen's got five bucks. Of course she does. She's crazy rich. Uh, so she's got five bucks. She will use two dictionaries and one blue and one green. And now she has established the cost of this professor. Oh, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope, nope. She could do this, but the thing is, she would immediately get the benefit of the professor, which is activate a worker placement spot. This is the only one she's done, so it's not a good time to recruit this professor yet. But Jen is definitely going to do that before the round is over, and she's going to get a double action out of something. So that's a bear and nice. So yeah, her first action, getting those five bucks, she hadn't hired that fresh yet, but she needs to keep this aside. All right, so she needs all this for the professor she's looking to hire. And her first action, I think, will be to um, buy some more books. Because after she does this, she's going to be out of knowledge. So remember, the way she could do it, she could visit her own kid and get up to six and do some research. She has plenty of money. Does she have what she needs for the research? Well, if we take a look, it is seven to, or I'm sorry, yeah, no, to jump to the next level, minus two for every student she's got. And she's got two students. So she could uh, do some research for only three. Yeah, let's go on ahead and do that. Um, Jen, she, but that means she's only getting her own knowledge. If she wanted to get points, which is kind of the point of the game, she could come over here and she could spend four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. She could spend 13 bucks and get a whole bunch of red. Now, if you buy multiple books from a given player, you don't get the points for all of the bookshelves, only for the best one. So, uh, you know, obviously Jen would do this one because it's worth three, whereas this one's worth two and this one's worth one and this one's not worth anything. Jen could also buy from me, but she would rather give money to the bank than to me, of course. But that's the problem. Sooner or later, there will be no points for giving it to the bank. And then sooner or later, Jen and I will start buying from each other. Um, it's definitely a weird quirk of the two-player game that you are incentivized not to buy from other players right from the get-go. Whereas in a higher player count game, players are buying knowledge from each other all the time. Because your alternative is to come over here and um, you know buy books. But this space gets gobbled up quick. Because this is also where you go for research. Whereas you can always come to this. You never get frozen out of there. You also never get frozen out of your own. Jen's going to do the maximum. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. To get six blue knowledge. There we go. Boom. And she now has enough left over for research. She needs seven minus two for her two students. So that's minus four. She needs three. And Jen has just done some more research. Now, that doesn't do anything for her. Remember, if she takes it to the top, she'll be getting more income. And these also indicate the value of books, which is important now, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, because the now that we're in year two, the students have gotten much more picky. Before, they only cared about having a certain number of books. Now, they care about the quality of the books. Any of these students, you have to have a pair and you have to have another. These ones have to be level one or level two. If you want any of these mathematicians, and all of these give you points for different metrics at the end of the game, you need to have two level one books, which are mine, by the way, because mine are the worst, 
two, a pair of level two or level three books, which are Jen's or the dummy players, and two dictionaries. And of course, over the course of the game, Jen might supplant and do more research, or I might catch up and do more research. So the value of books might change, which means the requirements of the students might change as things go on. All right, so anyway, though, so Jen just did a little bit of research by visiting and got a whole bunch of knowledge. That was her first turn. All right, and I am going to... Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think I need some books. I've got two books. And remember, how can I get them? I can get my, my own, which is pretty quick and easy. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that mine are crap doesn't matter if I want to go for one of these level ones. I would like to get that dictionary like, like Jen. But again, my level ones could do it. I need two and one and one. So I need three colors. If I go for the art students, I only need two colors. Which, if I get my own, which are the cheapest, but if I go for something else, well, again, I could come over here, spend six bucks, and I'll get one uh, book and one dictionary. Uh, or I could come over here, and remember, you can never be frozen out of this, and I could start buying because, hey, I could spend three bucks to get another red and get another victory point. Or I could give Jen. I'm not going to do that. Or I could spend four bucks and get three victory points. Yeah, I'm just about the points. Um, you know, I'm just about intercollegial interaction. So I'm going to come down here. I, I, I wish I had more money. I could go to the bishop first and get more money. But here's the thing. Jen might grab that book before I do. And that's a big honking bunch of three points to have. Uh, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to spend three bucks. Five. No, four bucks. To buy this book. Boom. And get three points. One, two, three. And now it is becoming less attractive to buy from that player. Sooner or later, if I want to get books, I'll probably start buying from Jen so I can continue getting points when I do. Um, I could have gotten more books, but I'd rather have points. Um, although, you know, books are worth points at the end of the game as well. Every book at the end of the game is basically worth one point. Or, I'm sorry, one dollar. And four dollars is worth a point. Dictionaries are worth a point apiece. And you also get points based on um, the relative value of your books. Or, I mean, you know, your, your standing. You get uh, points based on how much research you did multiplied by how many professors you have. You get points for the professors themselves. My first professor is worth four points. You get um, points. Uh, all your A's multiplied by all your B's give you points. And the number of, what do you call them? The uh, milestones. Jen's already done one. Give you points as well. So there are a lot of ways to score points. But anyway, I'm just scoring points by um, you know interacting. So I got one. I got three points. That was that. And Jen could still come here. And remember, these two spaces, you don't have to overpay. You're never blocked out of them. It's just the gray ones that you're potentially blocked out of. Right. Now it is Jen's turn. And Jen says, hi. I'm going to hire this guy now, please. Five bucks. Although, hold on a second. Jen has six bucks. And she has three colors. She could go for one of these instead. So let's look at them. First of all, there were six points a pop. This one, every time she activates him, she gets to do research and get another dictionary. This one, every time she gets a student, she can pay one fewer book. And considering the fact she wants to get more students, I mean, never mind the fact she gets um, one, two, three, four more students, she'll have her sixth worker. Plus, every time, every other student she gets gives her another dictionary and money. So this guy says, hey, when you're getting students, you get them cheaper. Yeah, I think Jen's going to go for that instead. She's going to pay six and jump up here, right? Which I means she still has to come for all that. And let's see. She will say to get him requires three blue, two dictionaries, and one green. So that is now the price. People don't have to pay money, but they do have to pay the exact recipe Jen has created if they want to get this guy on board. Jen now has her first perfecter. And this professor loves blue because that's what Jen hired him with. And Jen gets to use him immediately. And she can use him again on future turns uh, by spending books, but right now she gets to use him immediately. And this says, right now, recruit a student for one less book than normal. And Jen still has books. So, 
She could get another one of these. Now, you cannot get the same student again. So, but Jen could say, hey, she'll use this as a pair. She'll use the dictionary and she would need a third student, but she doesn't because she gets a discount. So let's do that. And let's see, so this is every time you recruit a professor, you get a free research and upgraded research. That's nice. This one is every time you visit this space, you get to do these actions twice instead of once. So you could buy from players and get dictionaries or buy from two different players. This one is get some money right now. And um, every time you get a student, get money. Yeah, Jen's going to be all about getting those students. So Jen, she doesn't have to spend a worker. She's using her professor. She will recruit this. Um, it costs a pair of level ones or twos. Jen's are level twos. A single thing. Oh, no, but again, dictionaries don't count. Dictionaries don't count. Dictionaries are different. So now is not a good time to hire this guy. Oh, but Jen wants to do that, which means before Jen does this move, Jen need to go out and get another book and not a, it had to be a different color book. She needed reds or she needed greens. So she could have come over here first, gotten some books and then done it. And then she would be able to get the recruit, which means the more students she gets, um, you know, and she's working on that. That would have been the better way to go. But you know what, folks, I think I've done enough rewind so far. And hopefully by now you have a pretty good idea of the flow of Alma Mater. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, a four, a three, a two, a one.